Hey guys, welcome back to our AutoCAD beginner series. In this lesson, we're going to be going over the Modify tab where we're going to mirror, we're going to show you arrays, scales, stretching, and all those other tools to kind of piggyback on what we learned in our last lesson. Guys, let's dive right into it. Hey guys, so what we're going to be doing now is we're just going to open a new drawing. So go create a new drawing and we're going to go over our Modify tools here. I'm just going to go and create a rectangle that we're going to play around with so we can get through this as quickly as possible. If you haven't already seen our previous tutorial, I highly recommend you go through there. Go watch it. Check it out because we go over all the drawing tools. I show you how to make it so you can type commands. I show you how you can just make things work smoother and better. And it's really helpful to go do that video first. So with all that said, we're just going to continue on here and we have our rectangle so we're going to start with the move command so how do you use this you click the move command you click your object you press enter and then you select where you want to move the object from I can be outside of my object so if I click right now it'll it'll do this and I'm going to be moving it from that point if I want to move it from the middle I'm going to go select the middle and I'll move it from the middle and it's just kind of straightforward so you select where you want to move it and this is especially useful if you're going to go and move it and let's say I want to have it so that it, the bottom left hand corner is at the top right hand corner so I'm going to grab the bottom left hand corner and I can snap it to where it was and I can just move it and make it work like that once that's done we have the rotate tool or the rotate command you click or type in rotate and you're going to select a base point. So where you select your base point is where it's going to rotate from. So if I select the middle, it's just going to rotate in the middle. So if I do that, it's just going to do this. So that's rotating. Uh, if I go here and I rotate, I to press enter and I click the top right hand corner and I do this, it's going to rotate in a different way. And that will also be different on each different corner. So please keep that in mind when you're doing that. The trim command is useful if you need to trim things up. So let's say I have an extension here. If I type in trim or I select the trim tool, I'm then going to be able to select what I want to delete. So you can see right here in AutoCAD 2025, the trim tool actually works really well. Uh, if you're using older versions, it should still work, but um, uh, the way that it works, I think in the newer versions is significantly better than it worked before because now it kind of, it's fixed for how it used to be. Um, I won't get into that, but anyways, if you're trimming, you're going to see I can get rid of this. So I'm going to go get rid of what I wanted and it just lets you go and trim around. You can see here, if I go and hover over different lines in my drawing, I'm going to be able to erase them essentially, get them out of the drawing if I don't want them. This is especially useful if you're creating op openings for things, you're creating windows or whatever, or if you're doing blocks, trim is just a really useful tool to have overall to make things clean and nice after that we have the copy tool so we're going to select the copy tool or type it in select our object press enter and we're going to be able to copy our object so uh, kind of like the move tool you can select where you want to copy it from so think of it as moving but you're copying it so if i click the bottom left hand corner i can copy it up there and then I can post, put it in the top right-hand corner. I can also put it in the top left-hand corner. I can also put it in the top, uh, sorry, bottom right-hand corner and top left-hand corner. And I've done this. So I'm just going to get rid of these because I don't want them there. And there you go. After that, we have mirror. So if I have the mirror tool, I do exactly what I, what I did before. I select the mirror tool or I type it in. I select my object, I press enter, and it's going to specify a point to mirror from. So if I do the bottom left-hand corner here, for example, I click that, it's going to mirror from that point. So you can see it mirrored from that point, and I can move it and manipulate it from that point. Once that's done, I can go and I can click down where I want it, if I'm so happy with it. And it's going to say, do you want to erase source object? If you want to copy it and just flip it pretty much and get rid of the source object, which would be the object you selected, you press yes. If you want to keep it, you press no. I'm going to press no for this tutorial. Once that's done, you also have the fillet command. So if I click my fillet command, it's going to say select first object or, and you're going to have a variety of options. There's polyline, radius, trim, multiple. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as the base right now. So I'm just going to go to fill it. I'm going to select my line up here and I'm going to select my line down here. And you're going to see it's going to try and fill it based on the um, settings that I have set for this drawing. So I'm going to go and do that. And you're going to see it just fills that point and brings those two lines together. I can make it so it's square. I can make it so it's a, so it's a, an arc type thing like you see here. Uh, but, but for this, you know, we're just leaving it base. We're going to have another tutorial on just fill it because it's quite a comprehensive command uh, later on. After that's done, you can stretch. So if I come here to this object, I can click stretch and you can pretty much stretch an object uh, however you want. Um, you can see that it didn't work, but if I click my object here and I grab this, this is stretching, so I'm stretching my object if I grab the middle here, and that's done. 
Once we're done that, we can scale. So we're going to go back to our base object. So I'm, well, actually, you know what? We'll just do this one. If I click scale and I select my corner, this is very important. I highly recommend using uh, the corner that you're working from. So in this case, I'm doing the bottom left. Um, but uh, it really doesn't matter. It's just where is it going to scale from? So let's say I want it to still be attached to this here in the bottom left and I want it flush to the bottom. I'm going to select the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to click it and I'm going to be able to scale it up. Now, you can see that I have a scale factor so I can just draw it where I need it and I can like estimate where it is, which is what a lot of people do. Um, however, you're going to see I'm going to be able to type into my bar how much I want it to be scaled by. So I can scale it by 2.1. I can scale it by 1.29. If I go all the way down to 1, um, you're going to see that that is the object's size and I can go and scale it by half. So a 0.5, I can scale it by, you know, 75% or whatever of the original size. So 0.75 and you kind of get the picture. So you just kind of want to put in a value that works for what you're doing. So if I do two times, I'm just going to type in two. Once I press two, I'm going to press enter. Once I press enter, it's going to be scaled. And that is how that works. So once you've done scaling, there is the array command. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to create another rectangle, and I'm going to select the array command. So I'm going to click that, press my object, press enter, and you're going to see I'm going to have an array show up. Now, I know this looks confusing. It looks like a lot. Just calm down, follow along. You're going to be able to select your columns, your rows, your levels. So levels is when you're going up in the Z direction. So that would be a 3D space. Uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. We're not doing 3D. For rows, I can type in two rows. Let's say I want two rows, and then I just click off. It's going to get rid of that. Let's say I want two columns. Uh, no, let's do six columns. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to type six, press enter. I'm going to get out of there and it should, you can see that it extended, but it didn't show anything, but that's all right. We'll get that fixed. We'll go to six and there we go. Now it's fixed. And then let's go back to three. So then we have six across and we have three up. You can also specify the distance. So this is the distance in between. And then there's also the total distance. So it's the total distance. Um, it, it's a little more complicated than that, but you can also just grab these arrows and extend things. So you don't have to type anything. If you click the top right hand corner, you can just extend it and pull it and it'll just automatically adjust your values. And then if you also, if you pull this, the farthest arrow one, you're just adding, you're adding uh, columns. And then if you're pulling this one, you're adding rows. If you pull the one closer to the, the main object, you're going to be changing the distance between them. And you'll change the distance between them here as well if you do that one. I'm just going to pull this down to make it a little smaller. And that's how you use arrays. Once you're done with that, click Close Array and it will be done. So that's not really too much to follow along with. It should be relatively simple to get a hang of. I'm trying to do a little 10 minute series for this and I'm going to have a huge comprehensive one put together after this whole series is done. So guys, hopefully this was helpful. If you haven't already, go check out our webinar on AutoCAD Certification Simplified. It's really important. It's great to learn uh, and we look forward to helping you guys in another lesson. So take care, goodbye, and good luck.